Thank you for joining me today in the first of what I hope to be a series of videos all to do with this amazing Magic Faraway Tree diamond painting which I recently unboxed. If you didn't see that video then please do take a look in the eye up here and I'll link that video in for you to be able to find that to watch first if you would like to. So welcome to Stone Magpie if you've seen my channel before and if not then please do consider subscribing so that you can follow the journey of this diamond painting. So since the unboxing I've had a little think about the kitting up process. I did use the sheets that came with the kit that listed all of the different colours and how many of the little packets were included. So I looked at the symbols because I kit up according to the symbol to make it easier, I find, when I'm diamond painting to see the symbol and relate the colour rather than use the numbers down the side here. If you're new to diamond painting, then just consider how it will be easy for you when you're doing your diamond painting and finding the different colours. You may want to do it differently to the way I do it, so I'm sure you'll find your own method. This is the way that I find it easier for the speed of the diamond painting. So I looked down all of the symbols. I worked out that there was going to be arrows, numbers, letters, symbols, lines, and I collated those together on the second sheet here. So these are my categories of symbols. Then I went through the list one by one, starting here, an arrow, and I plotted it like a tally sheet that we used to do at school, <laughs> and I never thought would be useful in real life. <laughs> Turns out it's very useful indeed. So I did each symbol. So arrow, then number, then that was I just put a symbol. So if it didn't really fit into a category anywhere, I wanted to keep the categories as small as possible. And I did that one by one all the way down the list and I plotted these out. And then at the end of that, when I got to number 120, which is the number 30 on this second sheet, I then had the amount of different colours in each category. And at this point, I needed to decide which storage I was going to use for this kit. And I decided to use a mix of Tic Tac boxes and my Elizabeth Ward storage system with all of the same size storage in it and I'll explain why I chose this one in a minute. So after choosing which storage system I wanted to use I then went about getting my labels and writing all of the different symbols on the labels ready to be able to stick onto the top of my storage. So you may be able to see that here on the Tic Tac boxes. They are all hand drawn because this kit didn't come with pre-printed labels. And all I've done is the symbol. I've not bothered with the numbers because I will sort that out once the diamond painting is finished into the correct number. So I hope that makes sense to any newbies I always welcome the new diamond painters to the channel as well and I really hope that you get involved in this incredible craft. It is so relaxing and so fun. I just love it. If you do have any questions, please do feel free to comment below and I'll answer them the best I can. I never ever say that I'm an expert. I'm always learning alongside everybody else. And thank you if you do comment and give tips to me as well. I really do appreciate them. So going back to the kitting up, I put all of the hand-drawn labels on each Tic Tac box and then proceeded to kit up from number one, which was 150 DMC number. Each colour has a DMC number attached to it and if we're lucky our kits include that number and this is important if we want to use the colour afterwards any leftover type projects 
or if sadly we do run out of diamonds, we need to know which colour it is to be able to contact the seller or purchase extras, whichever way that you end up doing so. Touch wood, touch my table. <laughs> I've not yet run out of colours very often. I think there's only been two kits ever that I've run out of colours of, and they were actually special diamonds, the special shaped ones. So I did contact the seller and I did get that rectified, but it did take a long time them coming. So touch wood that we don't have that problem with this one today. So that is my process for kitting up. I then proceeded to put all of the colours in the correct container. I didn't do it on video this time. With 120 colours, I did think it would be a bit onerous for you to watch me do that. However, I will talk through what I've done. So I had the two containers and I needed to decide which symbols would go in which. And what I did, I decided the Elizabeth Ward storage had enough containers to hold the most numbers because the numbers I knew from my tally sheet would be the most containers I would need at 62. So if I'd used my Tic Tac boxes, I have 64 containers, then I would have only had two left over. So by using my Elizabeth Ward storage, I've got plenty of gaps and I'm able to sort them out into numerical order, which was easy for me to be able to pinpoint straight away. So when you see this, you'll see I started at number one here and I wanted my tens to twenties going up one column. However, there were that many that it did go into the second column as well. So I was able to leave some gaps and then continue with the 20s. Then the next column, I've got my 30s. The next column, 40s. Then the next column, 50s and 60s with just one down in this corner. That was, just take my lid off so you can see it a bit clearer. Number 67 ended up having to go here Again, a gap, and then 71 to 84. So that worked out quite well, I believe, for my numbers. And it does feel a bit like the bingo because they're in the different lines. It did make me chuckle to myself a little bit. <laughs> if you've ever played bingo, then you'll know that they do do the numbers in, um, in the grids on the bingo sheet. Anyway, made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> So the next box you will see here that I've then got the letters to here and what I thought was I would put the little letters alongside its capital letter. So some of them do have the capital and the lower case letters like H, M, N but also this symbol here I thought looked a bit like a Y. So I've added it with the Y's and the lowercase Y as well. Next, I thought, okay, these look like crosses and stars, so they can be in a little category of their own. Lines here, arrows, and then on the bottom row, we've got just the random symbols. So that's how I've sorted out all of the different symbols into the different storage ready to start diamond painting. Are we ready? Yes, we are. Right, woo, exciting. Let's put this aside. The next job that I want to do to prepare the canvas is to use the release papers. If you've not seen release papers before, then this just creates like sections so that it's not too overwhelming when you diamond paint. I find it is much easier to section it off, otherwise I end up all over the place on the canvas. <laughs> I just keep going. Um, so by using these, it means that I can peel one off at a time and that's the section I'm working on. So 
I use the double-sided release papers because I always get a little bit worried that I'm going to stick it on the wrong way around and it will become stuck to the canvas. So I recommend the double-sided release papers. I bought these on Amazon. They weren't expensive and I do re reuse them over and over again. So I don't cover my whole canvas with these. I tend to do two rows at a time. So I've got my working row and then the row below that. And that gives me a finish point for my section, having that bottom row. Then once I've finished one row, I will put another row of release papers underneath. So I've always got two rows of release papers one working row and one finish row. I hope that makes sense. So to put the papers on, I'm going to peel back the protective layer. Whew, that took some doing. It's very, very sticky. And for the first time ever, I've got overlapping protective layers. So that's quite interesting for me. I always start diamond painting top right here. I am left-handed, so I tend to go right to left. So I'm going to stick my release papers from left to right because I overlap them. And I overlap them so that I've got a little bit of a flap that I can get hold of and pull the release papers off. I should also say that the sections won't all be the same size because I try and find a natural finish point, be it one colour, so I know that I can stop there and that's where I won't need any more colours into the next section. Or I do it by design. So you'll see that I'll probably end up with different size sections. And here is my overlapping flap so that when I'm pulling it off, I don't have to unstick it. So here is my next layer of protective cover. With such a sticky surface, I think you can tell that I'm trying not to overlap it in any way because if it sticks together, there'll be no chance of me getting it apart. So I am being extremely careful. I'm going to get my scissors and just give it a helping hand so that it's not bending over as much as it did. Yeah, that was a lot easier. Okay, release papers are going on. So that is the first row done. And as you can see, I've got flaps at every edge. So to make the removal a lot easier. Okay, now I just need to do the second row. Right, they are our two rows of release papers. Put these away and I probably won't need these because as I say when I finish that one I tend to use the tic tac box lid when I start diamond painting I'll remove this and pop it in the lid like that and then when I need my next row I can use these release papers again and continue all the way through the diamond painting. And that's the way that I work it. 
I also leave the protective layer over the top. So now that I've split it into three, I may well even cut this one in half too and end up with four strips of protective layer. And even though I'm doing squares, I still keep that on just to keep the dust off as I'm working on it. I especially do it with rounds because we don't want those bits of fluff and things in the gaps. It's not as necessary with squares because the squares do tend to cover the whole canvas, but personally, I do like to keep it on as much as I can until the framing. So there we are, one canvas ready to be worked on. One thing I didn't show you was this <laughs> and this are of course not the only diamonds. As you can imagine with a canvas this size, 98 by 90, I couldn't fit all of the diamonds in here. So I'll show you <laughs> The diamonds that I've still got. You won't believe it. Or maybe you will. Pack one, pack two, pack three, pack four. There we are. These are the diamonds that still need to be either in the containers or worked on as we go along. I have on this list written, you may well have spotted it, P1, so all of these colours are in pack one. Pack two, from 21 to 48, are in here. Pack three, pack four. So, for example, if I'm going to work on a section that has a lot of one colour, say here, instead of going to my storage box, I'm probably going to pick out one of these or two of these little packets and pour them into my tray and use them from that and then put those leftovers into the containers. Normally it works really well for me however I feel like this looks like I haven't even bothered kitting any of them up <laughs> so it might be a bit too much to do it that way. I'm going to wait and see how that works out. And if you do join me on my whip and chats that I'm hoping to get done with this diamond painting, then you may well see me work in different ways with those. I think that will be quite interesting for me to see how that develops throughout the painting. So you may be wondering why I didn't use my other Elizabeth Ward style instead of having all of these leftovers. Well, I'm still using the other one for my Diamond Art Club Partners in Crime diamond painting. Here is my box for the Diamond Art Club Partners in Crime diamond painting that I'm doing. And as you can see, I've still got a lot to do on that kit. So I didn't want to wait <laughs> to be able to use this one. So I do hope that you join me again for the next video and in the meantime, enjoy your own diamond painting. Take care, everybody. Bye.